Hey everyone, Honest Chewy here. Hopefully everybody's doing okay. And uh, I'm just going to say just before I get into this video that you're probably wondering where I am right now. And I'm in the spare room at my mum's at the moment. Um, because I'm just getting stuff moved around in my room and uh, I've got some exciting news to share in the next video. I won't announce it just yet, but you could probably gather what it is. Um, it's just, let's just say things are moving forward nicely. And uh, yeah, there's a reason I'm in this room and can't go in my room because it's a bit um, bit of a mess at the moment. Uh, just getting stuff sorted, really. Like, say I announced it in the last video, so you probably know what it is, but I'm not going to say it just yet. Uh, we'll wait until, obviously, you know, things are a bit more, less chaotic, so to speak. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm going to just delve into this video and just let you know that I figured I'd do a review because I haven't done a video in a while. And if I leave it, Longer. It's going to be even longer before I do a video. It's going to be like another month. Um, and quick disclaimer before I start this. Hang on. <clears throat> oh, sorry about that. I've had these, uh, I went to this fish and chip shop in Thornaby. And uh, regret. Because uh, I had chicken burger and chips and onion rings. And I thought you can't mess that up. And when they arrived, the onion rings were like dripping with grease. Like it leaked out the box all over the uh, container it was in. So I opened it up. And luckily the burger was fine and everything. So I ate the burger. The burger was fine. And I went the top layer of chips and they were fine. And then as I got like through the middle, because I was hungry, I was just eating them. And I realised these aren't cooked. And they were rock hard. And let's just say it's repeating on me and all the grease. For the onion. I didn't eat the onion rings. I binned them. I had one. And that's probably what's repeating on me a little bit now. So I do apologise if I burp or anything. Um, but yeah, excuse me in advance. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> But uh, I'm going to crack on with the video and just let you know that, um, like I say, things are moving along good. And now this is going to be a review of Sil Silent Night. Whoa, that's a totally different movie. Uh, a review of Violent Night. Now it stars David Harbour and it's got John Legrins. I can't say his surname. I totally apologise, but it's the, it's the mechanic out of John Wick. And uh, it's what an amazing movie. Straight away, I'm going to just tell you, it's good. Like, if you haven't watched it, especially for a action Christmas one, you could say it's a horror in a way. It's got some horror elements to it. It's got, like, sort of more um, brutal elements to it, so to speak. Like, some of the deaths are, like, what you'd think a evil Santa Claus would do. Like, there's one bit in the trailer where he just launches a star at someone's face. And uh, it's very grim, and it's just sticking out the face. So, so you could class it as a bit of a horror. Um, and uh, but mainly, it's it's the main thing it is, and this is the main reason why I wanted to make the review. Uh, it surprised me as well. But David Harbour makes the movie, uh, and also the the guy who plays the villain, John. I'm just gonna call him John. Um, it's a comedy, and it's hilarious. Like from the start, you're in stitches right up to the get go. Like he's in a bar and he's chatting away to Santa Claus and he's like, oh, this time of year again. And uh, the guy next to him is like, yeah, you know, traditional sort of, you know, what do you, you know, how many years have you worked? And he goes, oh, I've lost count. And then the other guy's like, oh, I've done, what, seven or something. And then um, just back and forth. And it's just funny because he's just like, oh, I'm done. I'm done with it. I'm done. And he's drinking lager and it's just funny seeing Santa like that. Um, and it's legit Santa because he goes to the roof and the woman's like in the bar like whoa don't go to the roof what are you doing you're crazy drunk anyway so she goes and chases him and obviously she sees him in the reindeers and she looks dead shocked and then he just throws up on her <laughs> she just gets like thrown up on by him still looking shocked still looking in awe um, which is just that's the whole like that just sets it up for how the movie is and I've got to say right when it cuts to the family and the dram. By the way, I am sat on this pillow. It's in a bag. So if you see this, I apologise. It's the only thing that's comfy about it. It's a, it's a wooden floor otherwise. And it's it's not very comfy. Um, but I've got to say, I like to say, it cuts to the family. And I've got to say one thing. What a great actor the little girl is, isn't it? She is a good actor. Actress, even. And so are the two, the parents. Like the mint. Like all of them. And the guy will never back down, isn't it? <laughs> He's so good in it as well. Um, it's class. It's really good. Um, it's really... Um, this is just the basic of the story. Um, it's not a spoiler. I'm just going to let you know what's happening, really. So, the little girl obviously believes in Santa Claus. 
Um, and the mum and dad are like, well, no, it's just made up. But they don't tell her this. Um, they sort of roll a bit and go, yeah, yeah, you know, we'll, uh, we're going to go to our mum's for Christmas. And the mum is like loaded. It's a massive mansion. Like, it's huge. Um, like, this is like a mansion combined with another mansion. It's massive. And so she's loaded. And she's got a load of cash uh, in, like, a vault. And which is, you know, you know where it's going a little bit. Anyway, there's a bit of drama, like the, the parents aren't speaking, the uh, the mum's not happy with the dad, and uh, it sort of comes across like he's not, not really not around as much, but sort of not really remembering things. Like, like for instance, this is at the beginning where she writes a list to Santa, and it was, she was just about to go to bed. She's like, oh, I haven't written a list to Santa. And he was like, you know, did you have you, you know, have you, have you got stuff to do? And he's like, no, I don't have anything for that. But wait there, I've got an early present for you. So he comes up with it and gives her like the main trope in a movie, gives her a walkie talkie. And I've got to say it is used so well in the movie. Like he says with a walkie talkie, she can talk directly to Santa. And it was a proper cute thing. And anyway, she was just chatting, telling Santa what she wanted. And obviously, you know, one was on the other end. Um... And then Santa lands, has his cookies, sips a bit of the milk, doesn't like it because it's semi-skimmed. This is, <laughs> honestly, it's it's proper funny. It's, oh, I laughed throughout the whole lot. I like to say, like, the, the villain in it as well is awesome. The guy, like, um, this isn't a spoiler, this is literally the beginning of it. Um, let's just say there's a lot of money in there after it. So the guy comes in. Kills the security guard like. We like the security guard, nice security guard, don't get attached. Don't get attached to him. It's not a spoiler because it happens at the beginning. Don't get attached to him. I did. I liked him. He was dead jolly and, you know, he, he wanted to, you know, he only wanted the Christmas Day off, Boxing Day. But he got it, he got it off all right. He got, you know, but uh, unfortunately. Um, but it's just funny as, as because the guys, like, the guy who runs it gives them all Christmas names like Twinkles and Gingerbread and, uh, what is it, he calls himself Scrooge. <laughs> and it's just it's just very tongue in cheek and it knows what it is and I think that's what works with this movie is it knows what it is like it's universal as well to know what it is when they don't know what it is that's where they go wrong uh, that's, that's not just universal movies but it's a big thing with universal like with The Mummy the Tom Cruise one like it didn't know what it was it, it, let's face it that's not The Mummy who cares about him uh, falling in love with him like what like because it's tom cruise she has to be in love with him like come on he's he's tom cruise like like have a fight scene in it does his own stunts but anyway i'm sidetracked there but when they know what the material is like this movie it's amazing like 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 the no fine fact what we want and i'm not gonna lie i thought with it being a 15 it was gonna cut back hold back a little bit on the violence no nah, the title's right the title's right like be prepared when you're going it's it's very uh it's grim it's not well, yeah, it is. Yeah. Like, there's a certain definite... I'll say. I'll say. It's not a spoiler. I mentioned it anyway. Where he's having a fight with this guy. And what's good about this movie is they're not just... Like, John Wick, you believe it. Because, obviously, it's a gun. And a gun. And then you just shoot them and they're dead. Uh, headshots, you know. And John Wick's very skilled at that. But it does take away a few of the hand-to-hand -hand combat. But what I like about John Wick is when they do do the hand-to-hand -hand combat... How good it is like there is times where you're out of ammo on your hand-to-hand -hand combats this is just straight up hand-to-hand -hand combat because obviously Santa doesn't have a gun uh he doesn't really have any weapons really uh he makes shift ones but he doesn't really have any um and anyway he gets this guy and he, and he disarms him he like like launches at him and does it and the guy's like right i'm gonna whoop your ass and uh the guy does but then he gets his ass whooped but then knocks a tree over and he Santa uh, flings a star at uh, his eye. I never thought I'd say that sentence out loud. Santa flings a star in someone's eye. Christmas tree star. There you go. <laughs> anyway, launches it in his eye and he falls down. You think, oh, so he's dead. no, he's not. He's back up with it sticking out of his eye. Like, that's how brutal the movie is. And obviously the star needs plugging in and he plugs it in and it sets the guy's face on fire. Right? And it's like burning, burning. As he's chatting, you know, getting the end to calm off him and stuff, his face is burning. Like, you see it. Uh, so it's a very, like, brutal movie. And it also gives a good 
story, like like a surprising bit in the movie. I will, and I'm going to men mention it because I liked it. There's a reason he knows how to fight. That's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to spoil it, um, but there's a reason he knows how to fight. And it's delved into something that I've kind of wanted in a Santa horror movie. I wanted it to be on before, or an action Santa movie like this. Uh, or even just a genuine Santa movie. I know they're supposed to be all, you know, Christmassy and cheery. And this has still got that. That's what's good about this movie. It still has the Christmas cheer. Christmas spirit. It still has it. It's not just like, oh, it's a horror and, you know, it's evil Santa. Oh, we have the trees and the look and the music. This really has the spirit side of it and really kind of delves into, like, a bit of a dark past he's got. Um, I'm just going to say it all. There's your hint. <laughs> Let's just say... He likes Hammer, Mr. Hammer. And, um, yeah, the only film thing I've got to say about the movie, but I'm guessing there's going to be a second one, uh, I'm, I'm hoping there is, um, is a simple case of we hear about Mrs. Claus. He has a ring on and he says, you know, about my problems and stuff. But, you know, genuine stuff, which humanises him a bit. And um, it just doesn't show, like, you don't see her. That's the only thing I was a bit like, ooh, and it just sort of ends a little bit, sort of, like, not a letdown ending, but an ending that I would probably have thought how they react to a certain thing that happens at the end, like how they react to, you know, I'll say, I'll, you know, how they react to it at the end is very just, oh, instead of, oh my God, like, you know. You don't know what I mean when you watch it. Um, and I highly recommend watching it. Like I say, what I've said is nothing spoilery at all because it isn't even delving into the meat of the pie. That's just a crust, what I've said. Uh, the meat of the pie is, 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 is David Arbour. You know, he's made, what an amazing actor he is. Like, honestly, I knew he was good at Stranger Things. But, wow, he's done so good. Like, like even in the movies that aren't so good, um, a bit like... Um, Black Widow. Uh, now I left a review of that and uh, I enjoyed it, but at the time I did. But now when I think back and I noticed certain people and certain plots, like the perfume thing, you can't hit me because he stinks. You know, uh, no. And the main thing, Taskmaster, I totally didn't. I didn't realize for some reason uh, until the movie was done, and I was like, "What the?" Like I did a little bit in the movie, but I didn't quite. Twig on it was the one that was in Batman, wasn't it, where you're fighting? And I was like, what a massive letdown. Like, come on. Like, he, he, she could have still been ta Taskmaster. I wouldn't have minded it. But it's not to be thingy. It's the voice. He talks and he sounds badass. And I would have liked it to have been so many voice actors that could have picked that would have sounded really badass. Even if it was a woman, if they want to go down the woman route. But a male would have just worked so well with it. Um, instead of it just being a silent sort of, you know... Have her as just an assassin. Have her as just she's trained and reads the moves. Don't have Takuma. Anyway, I'm, I'm delving into a different movie. But I'm just going to say David Harbour made that movie as well. Like, he was amazing in that. Uh, he kicked ass as well in that. And uh, I've got to say, for his age, he's quite ripped. But in here, he gets like... It's sort of like he put weight... He's generally put weight on for this role. And it's so cool. Because um, he proper kicks ass with a belly and stuff. Which is, you know, what I like to see. I like to see the stereotypical, you know, ripped. Because the bulletproof because of the muscles. I like it's The Rock. The Rock, you know, is bulletproof. <laughs> but uh, it's like, it's nice to see someone overweight kicking ass, you know, for a change. And sort of not being sort of, like Santa. I mean, that's, that's the perfect example. Seeing Santa kick ass is just so good. Because it's like a bit refreshing. So what you don't really see. Uh, anyway. Uh, the closest thing I've got to seeing that is Christmas Chronicles or something it's called. Not Christmas Chronicles. Whoa, that's a different one. Uh, Christmas Holidays, Horrors or something. And uh, Krumpus was in it. It's cool. Um, anyway, that's it. I'm going to end a video here. Um, if you've enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe. And uh, yeah, just, just you know, let me know in the comments if you've liked it as well. And uh, have a Merry Christmas time. That's my singing. All right, I will see you later. Happy Christmas and have a good New Year as well, because I'll probably see you after New Year. Bye. Enjoy.